Hey, this is Everett, producer of The Scalpel, with a special presentation. Ann Vandersteel at Steel Truth welcomes Dr. Keith Rose to discuss Afghanistan. We're going to walk through the history of the developments that have brought Afghanistan and America and the world to this point. How did the U.S. fail the people of Afghanistan to the point of literally handing over an entire country, all of its resources, to a terrorist group, arming that group with their very best weapons and preparing for them a welcome wagon of cash. If you want to know what's happening, listen to this episode. The Scalpel with Dr. Keith Rose. Cutting down to the truth through history and experience. Subscribe to The Scalpel wherever you listen to podcasts. Follow us on Instagram at The Scalpel Podcast. On Twitter at The Scalpel Edge. Email kfr at scalpeledge.com. Or the website scalpeledge.com. The next episode of The Scalpel starts now. Is back. Highest inflation rate in the United States. The southern border is collapsing. The climb of COVID infections. We amplify our power. We summon the new strength. This is a recruitment act. We'd be embarrassed. Diplomacy is back. Now the Taliban are back. Kabul is not in an imminent threat environment. The likelihood there's going to be the Taliban overrunning everything and owning the whole country is highly unlikely. They own the whole country now, the Taliban. The Taliban are now in complete control of Afghanistan. How did President Biden get this so wrong? Well, first of all, the mission hasn't failed. Yeah. If this is a failure, what does failure look like exactly? Fire! You destroyed not Afghanistan, but the world! I don't care if you think I'm Satan reincarnated. Do I bear responsibility? Zero responsibility. China is ready for friendly relations with the Taliban. The lady is so bad that Dora threw in the Taliban and they're going to come in and kill us. Slow down, everybody. <laughs> We have to ask the Taliban for permission for American citizens to leave. True or not true? They, they are in control. I can't uh, think of anyone better to lead this operation than... than uh, uh, America's chanting death to America. Call yourself a president! Dr. Rose, thanks for being with us this evening. It's good to see you again. Good to see you. We have a lot going on in Afghanistan right now. Clearly, the Biden administration has welched on what could be a deal with them, and it's coming out exactly what the financial uh, makings of that deal are. We have a gentleman who's now got a bounty on his head for a long time, $10 million, but seemingly the minister the, the uh, minister of the interior running Afghanistan for the Taliban. We've got Americans being held hostage. We have women's lives being enslaved and killed. Uh, is there any hope for this country? Let's let's break down all these concerns because it looks bleak over there and it's making us look really bad. Well, it is. And unfortunately, we have an administration and a mainstream media that are conflating the leaving in Afghanistan with the actual exit and how we exited Afghanistan. Afghanistan, we wanted Afghanistan. I mean, let me put this in a, a clear contrast. We had 20 years, four presidents, trillions of dollars placed in Afghanistan to replace the Taliban with the Taliban. And the way we exited not only did not give the Afghans there even a fighting chance to remain free, and to keep the liberties that they had developed over the past 20 years. You see, this is a generation. 20 years is a generation. There's a generation of Afghans that have never known the tyranny of the Taliban or, or a tyrannical regime. We not only did not give them the opportunity, we actually made sure and are now trying to shut the door on them having that said opportunity. When President Biden, and I use that in asterisks, came out and said, 
you know, they have a well-trained army. You saw the press conference he did. We put a lot of money in there. They can basically, I'm paraphrasing, take care of themselves. What he neglected to say with whichever functioning neuron was working on that day was that the, the Taliban have been elevated on the world stage by our State Department. We actually left billions, over $80 billion in weapons for the Taliban at the the base at Bagram Airfield. And at the same time, we simultaneously, before we left, it blew up the ammo depots that the Northern Alliance and the actual people that we trained in Afghanistan could have used to, quote, fight the Taliban. When we left the base in the middle of the night in, in Bagram, they did not even, the military, my understanding from a lot of close sources, did not even tell the Afghan military they were leaving. They found out about it the next day. However, they did tell the Taliban they were leaving. And so the Taliban could head over there and pick up those weapons. And I don't think the American people really understand the the gravity of how m- much armament was left. We left more weapons in Afghanistan than we have given 80 percent of it's 80 percent of the weapons that we have given the nation of Israel since we've been supporting them. It's right. more weapons than most third world countries have. So we one, we we armed terrorists, terrorists that are working with Al Qaeda terrorists that are working with foreign fighters. So we, we basically created a terrorist super state and at the same time hamstrung and have almost completely prevented any ground roots support for the actual Afghan military we trained and their actual le- legitimate government, which is up in the Panjshir Valley right now. So let's just take this, uh, you know, like taking down an elephant one bite at a time, because not only do we leave an immense cache of weapons, like you just explained, there was also cash that was supposed to transpire. And there's uh, a phone call that President Biden had. And of course, uh, orange woman Badge and Saki is trying to cover for with the transcript already out there. Reuters and AP, everybody's published this transcript. It really happened. There was money that was supposed to be transferred. It didn't happen because the Afghan government fled. And that vacuum was filled with Taliban. There's gold involved that I understand is being held in a vault at the Federal Reserve in New York. Um, seemingly, maybe the Taliban could show up and get it. I think that'd be kind of difficult, but maybe not. Um, I guess I'm trying to understand is, A, the pallets of cash, where is it? Who's holding it? Um, and two, that gold, is it being held in the Federal Reserve? And is, is the Federal Reserve under the control of the international banking cabal at this moment, to your understanding, or is it under the control of the Treasury per what President Trump did when COVID first started to become a thing back in March of 2020? Well, you're, you're exactly right. Basically, a man by the name of, of, of Jamal Ahmadi, who was the governor of DAB, Afghan Central Bank, he was supposed to work and allow the shipments of cash, to my understanding, to come in for the Taliban. However, Ghani fled so quickly, and we created such a vacuum that as the Taliban swept into Kabul to fill that vacuum, I believe it caused enough of a disturbance in the matrix to blow the fig leaf off the transfer of cash that our State Department was planning to give the Taliban. And so now, The Taliban, they were even tweeting out, they were looking for Ahmadi because they wanted this cash. Now they don't have the cash. They have money from extortion. They have money from the drug trade. They have money from all their taking, you know, taxes on the people. Their their corrupt taxes are kind of like the Sopranos getting their, their tax. But it's not enough money to run a nation. And what they really want, as Laura, as you alluded to, is the $1.3 billion dollars that is being held in the Federal Reserve, ironically enough, quite close to ground zero at where the World Trade Centers were. And if there was any justice in the world, that money would be taken and redistributed to help the families of people injured in 9-11 and to recompensate those that suffered and lost loved ones and are currently still suffering from diseases and ailments they have. But right now the Taliban are struggling because they need cash. 
I believe the State Department had plans to bring that cash and they just didn't have a big enough window of time to bring it in. So now what I believe you're seeing is unfolding is you have a State Department coordinating with the Taliban to create manifests of American citizens to get them out on planes. And it was just reported yesterday that they are the person in charge of reviewing those manifests over them all is a gentleman by the name of Siraj Haqqani, mm-hmm. who the Department of Justice has a $10 million bounty on. Siraj Haqqani, who's responsible for the suicide bombing network that killed hundreds of American soldiers. Siraj Haqqani, who is responsible for the bombing of the Serena Hotel. Siraj Haqqani, who is responsible for the kidnapping of David Rhodes and the kidnapping of Bo Bergdahl. Ironically enough, he's the same Siraj Haqqani who the CIA dealt with to trade Bo Bergdahl for five fighters from Qatar that were being, or five fighters that were being held five Taliban fighters that were being held in prison, and four of those fighters right now that were traded for Bo Bergdahl from the Haqqani network are now in positions of leadership in the new Taliban government in Afghanistan. And it's important to note that this is all made possible. You know how we have those commercials and say, brought to you by, it's all made possible by the nation of Pakistan, because Pakistan is the largest sponsor of terror that I'm aware of in the world right now as a nation, because the Pakistani ISI, their security services, their intelligence division, has supported Siraj Haqqani and his network for a long time. And I don't believe it's a coincidence that the head of the ISI, their intelligence network in Pakistan, was in the Serena Hotel the other day in Kabul, Afghanistan, almost simultaneously when Siraj Haqqani is made head of Ministry Interior, and he's now looking over these lists of people that can be scrubbed from these lists or, or put on manifests and on planes. And when everyone tried to get the American citizens on these planes surprised, the Taliban said they couldn't leave. They right. weren't being held hostage. They were just told they couldn't leave. And I believe that's the fig leaf that's trying to be reestablished to allow those cash payments to the Taliban. Okay, so there's your airplanes with hostages seemingly being held on these airplanes. Having a terrorist uh, running at the Department of the Minister of uh, uh, Interior for Interior Interior, excuse yeah. me, the Minister and for in Interior charge, and in charge of their intel services too. He's he's kind of setting up their intel services, and he's he's the pet of the ISI who's going to be looking over all the intel services. Okay, so let's sort of war game this a little bit here. We know that Afghanistan's GDP is about thirty nine billion, right? Somewhere between Vermont and I don't know Alaska. You know, not a very big GDP. They need drugs right to to uh to actually fund their 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 illegitimate country their operations um but they also can get access to oil now from iran and they can sell it to the ccp because if they're controlling the country they can run that pipeline to oil natural gas right across uh afghanistan into china to move that that's how you're going to get real money to run a country uh if you are the if you are the minister of the interior you can now control where pipelines go and if you're also a, uh, a criminal like he is, you also have no problem holding American hostages, which will allow you to get bounty to help fund other operations until you can complete you know, a pipeline like that. Does that seem to sort of fit a narrative here on, on how they think they're going to run their country since they don't clearly have enough money to run themselves as it is today? Well, that does fit a narrative. It also fits the open source reports by the India Times a month before Kabul fell, about a month, month and a half before, the Taliban, before we even had the peace process, quote unquote, done by Ambassador Khalizad, while he was negotiating with the Taliban, they were meeting with officials from the TAPI pipeline, the Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, right. Pakistan, India pipeline. They were making a deal for the pipeline to come through Afghanistan before they were even officially given the country. And so, and I think it's important, American citizens, I pray, will wake up to this. This is a sentinel event in our country. It's a time that will define us the rest of our lives if we don't pay attention to the sheer immorality and moral bankruptcy of this administration and how they have dealt with the Taliban, because it's fitting on the graves of everyone that was in Afghanistan, every soldier, every contractor, every person, support person that was there to help that nation. 
And there were some great people in Afghanistan that helped us. And so you have the Taliban making a deal for a pipeline. And I and then you have Ambassador, Cal, Ambassador Khalizad, who never held the Taliban to any preconditions. We just capitulated over and over again. And this was reported, I know, because I provided a lot of the reporting to the Pentagon, into the intelligence services, and it was ignored. Now, I can't tell you this for certain, but I believe it was ignored by the State Department based mm -hmm. on their actions and their continued actions. You have basically the unmagnificent seven, the same unmagnificent seven that caused problems in Benghazi. They just took the abandonment of American servicemen contractors and intelligence assets in Benghazi in a small city, and they've just taken it on a, a larger stage. They're doing it in right. a nation now. Yeah. Well, this is their playbook. They clearly don't care about American lives. Everybody's expendable to the end of their agenda, whatever their agenda is, which is taking shape again to be the same things. Weapons transfer, uh, oil, it's all about the money. It's all about control. You know, again, the, the cost of human life, besides the 13 American military, our fallen 13, whose lives were needlessly blown to smithereens, thanks to Joe Biden and the policies. We've also got children that the Taliban are taking off in trucks, you know, to do God knows what with. I know we've got video footage of these kids that are being carted away by people in the Taliban. And we've also got, you know, concerns of, you know, talk us through this right here. What are you seeing here, Keith? Sent out of the pan sheer. This was when the Taliban were getting, you see Mohammed uh, Massoud, his mm -hmm. picture there on the video. You can see this is the, there he is right there. This is the Panjshir Valley that the Taliban are taking children and young, young kids and they're removing them to God knows where. They're going up in the Panjshir and doing this. And it's important for every American to know they could not do it without the financial, tactical, command, and logistics support of the Pakistani army and intelligence services. In wow. fact, the other night, we have multiple reports that there were 29 helicopters with 350 commandos from Pakistan hunting uh, Amarullah Saleh, the de facto president of Afghanistan in the Panjshir. So what you're seeing is you're seeing the Taliban who told us what they were gonna do in the Panjshir. I know I sent you that tweet before right. they erase it. You can put up that screenshot Yep. You have a someone That's the Taliban spokesperson right there as a spokesperson or one of the spokespeople saying we will come and kill all the pensioners and take their women as our slaves. And then you see that on video happening. And they're doing this with the support of Pakistan and Pakistan's military. The majority of the money in the Pakistani military comes from the United States of America. And we need to, at this moment, lay down a marker with the world and defund Pakistan. And we should support a country that has been very good to us, and that's India, Pakistan's neighbor. Because people right. will say, well, Pakistan has nuclear weapons. So does India. Right. And India has been a much better neighbor. The ISI, Laura, has a history of support for terrorism. There was one person captured after the Mumbai attacks in India captured alive, and when he was debriefed and they got all the information from him, he talked about how the Pakistani ISI had a safe house in Karachi, a command center, Joint Operations Command Center. They had trained these young guys for a few years in tactics, in communications, in intelligence. They supported that attack on India. That is not in dispute, that is, that is known. The Pakistani intelligence agency and visa Pakistan, unfortunately, not the good people. I know some amazing people in Pakistan, and I'm not saying the people, but parts of their government have supported terrorism, and they are now supporting the subversion of an entire nation that the Taliban could not take and control and keep Afghanistan without Pakistan's support. And so when we are asking nicely for the Taliban to give us our American citizens back, on one hand, we're pleading, and on the other hand, we're handing cash to the people that are supporting it in the first place, right. and that's the Pakistani army and their intelligence services. This whole thing just is so rotten, rotten to the core, and it starts right here in our own United States government for doing dealings with 
with jihadis, with criminals, with people who do nothing, who mean nothing more than to harm good people. And this is what our federal government is doing business with cabal members around the world. And there's just really no, uh, no consternation, no reflection, no concern for Americans, our military, the people over there that are doing the work because they're being told to by their own government. It's just so bad. Keith, how can we, uh, you're in the intelligence community. You're very active. You've been very active in helping go and get Americans out and, you know, pull these folks out of Afghanistan right now. Thank you very much for your continued service and for your service prior to this when you were active in the military. How can Americans help you help our friends and, and neighbors that are still stuck over there? Well, the first thing they can do is uh, I'll take a I'll take a page right out of um, the Department of Justice or it's, you know DHS. See something, say something. Right. You need to make your educate yourself on what's going on right now because I'll I'll step you through why it's so important for our nation and the security of our nation. Right now, we have a rogue Pakistan military and ISI that is supporting creating a terrorist super state in Afghanistan, a terrorist super state that will try to claim legitimacy in the UN and be supported by other countries that have supported terrorism in the past quietly. This terrorist super state is going to be something way worse than the Afghanistan we got there when we got there in Afghanistan after 9-11. And not only are they going to build a terrorist super state, not only are they going to fund it, but then they are going to become proxies mm -hmm. for countries like China. They're going to allow China to come in and grab rare earth minerals. They're going to give China access across Afghanistan to Iran, to a deep water port in the Mediterranean. And Pakistan will still have the ability to export terrorism like they did in India, like they have in Afghanistan. And I don't believe they're gonna stop there because we know, and I won't go deep into this, that there are international jihadis that are there right now. Oh, or yeah. They actually, the PAC, the, and I'm sorry, and the Pakistani um, ISI has, has brought in more Al Qaeda. They come across the border from Pakistan, their safe houses, three that we know of, where they, bring in the al-Qaeda. They have their own gels, their own kind of ruling group. They give them money. They give them equipment, but unfortunately, some of our equipment. And then they send them out and put them into the Taliban ranks. So you have al-Qaeda, a resurgent al-Qaeda, flooding the zone in Afghanistan way worse than it was prior to 9-11. And then you have Pakistan facilitating all of that at the same time. And so when you have this, and I also have video of Pakistani intelligence and Iranian intelligence, ironically enough, meeting with the Afghans, uh, not the Taliban in Afghanistan. And so what Americans need to do is recognize that Pakistan right now is exporting terrorism. And the best way to stop them from doing this is to peacefully protest at the Pakistani consulates around this country and around Europe and let them know we do not support terror. Defund Pakistan as long as they're supporting terrorism. And at the same time, I think as a nation, we need to make more aggressive overtures to India, to the Indian government that has been very supportive of us, both economically and militarily. Right. And we need to start giving that support that we were giving to Pakistan to India. And, I'll, and I would tell you, if people think we're getting out too far over our skis, I know someone who was a former chief of station in Pakistan, and fairly recently, and he left the agency because he had firsthand knowledge of the Pakistani ISI putting commandos into guerrilla groups in Afghanistan, Taliban guerrilla groups that were killing American troops. And he left because the agency, the CIA, who has a strong liaison relationship with the ISI, was not addressing that. And this gentleman had enough integrity to walk away from that. Right. And so what we're seeing as a nation is we've seen the complete abrogation of leadership. And this is why it's important. If we ever have to deal with another conflict around the world, which we will, how are we going to recruit assets and intelligence 
when they see us abandoning the fe- people that helped us in the first place. 100%. It, it basically makes our allies and our future allies not yeah. trust us. And it yeah. makes our enemies that don't fear us. And in the Middle East, weakness encourages aggression. It doesn't encourage safe spaces. There are none in the Middle East. There's none in Southeast Asia. So we have, as a nation, need to stand up. And, and I'll tell you, there's there's another important tidbit that I think your your folks should look into, and that's a law firm called Greenberg, Greenberg Trausig. It's T-R-A-U-I-G, law firm. This is the law firm I understand that's responsible. They're the public relations arm for the nation of Pakistan. They're the ones that put out all the try to counter all the actual information that's coming okay. out about Pakistan right now. So if people are going to, you know, protest at the consulates, I think they could probably look sure. up the Greenberg Trog Law Firm and maybe just say, hey, you yeah. know, we cancel people. Cancel culture has turned away for people for much less. I'm waiting to see the celebrities. I'm waiting to see the They're not athletes, coming. the superstars that are going to come coming. out and say, you know what, these truckload of children that are being removed from the pan sheer, that's wrong. This law firm in the U.S. is supporting that. I'm going to stand. Where is the moral authority? And I would encourage the church to stand. This is a moral issue that we need to stand on. 100 percent. Dr. Keith Rose, incredible information. I'm going to leave this graphic up. That's a a picture where uh, you just got this from one of your intelligence sources on the ground. And they painted a mural. And this is just literally minutes old where it says we defeated the USA, says the Taliban wall writing. I thought Zal had negotiated. God help us. Joe has given victory to global jihadi terrorists. It basically says we defeated the USA. This is your buddy's comments about the Taliban writing this. Right. And Zal is is Ambassador Kalazad. They thought he had negotiated with them. And so what they're saying is and they've been saying this. And I've been putting this out. We've we've given information to the Pentagon on this. The Taliban, their entire time on their social media and their PR networks have been saying they're defeating us. They never capitulated. They yeah. never were going to capitulate. They knew we were going to give them the bank, literally, and, and allow them to become a terrorist super state. And I just cannot understand why we're doing that. So hashtag make it viral, defund Pakistan. We need to support our Indian allies, and we need to stop terrorism yes, we and, do. The, and the attacks on the people in the Panjshir. And if enough Americans reach out to their congressmen, their senators, and they start going to peacefully protest at this law firm, at the Pakistani consulates, and bring awareness to this, maybe, just maybe, we can save a few lives. That would be fantastic. Keith, thank you so much for your continued support, the work you're doing and trying to save Americans over there, and of course, bringing intelligence like this and awareness to Americans tonight. Appreciate you so much. Thanks, Ed. protest line, freedom scribbled on your side. Headline, New York Times, standing on the edge of a revolution. Just obey your secret safe with the NSA And God we trust or the CIA Standing on the edge of a revolution Give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts and subscribe to The Scalpel wherever you listen to podcasts. Follow us on Instagram at The Scalpel Podcast, on Twitter at The Scalpel Edge, email kfr at scalpeledge.com, or the website scalpeledge.com.